The next section, which I'm sure you've heard me mention a few times now, is the banking section. There's two ways to achieve getting there. So the first way, and the most obvious, is to click on the banking tab here. So if you click on that, you'll be taken to the page of bank account summary. So if you have multiple bank accounts, they'll all be listed here. You can track each account balance or you can track all the accounts with the graph. And yes, you can change the primary bank account if you switch banks and everything like that, which is simply gonna be editing the details of the bank account itself. Um, but for now, we can see we've got the business current account, which is gonna be the main account that you're using. And you've got petty cash. And what we do with petty cash is simply add your one pound share in the company or whatever the share structure is. We just keep it in petty cash so we know that's the amount you've paid for your shares. And remember how I said there was another way to get to the banking tab? Well, the main way to get to your actual main bank account, the primary account in your free agent, is to click it on here which is the snippet from the banking tab. So it's called business current account. You can actually click on this text to be taken directly to the business current account. So I'm just gonna go in there now. And this has taken us to the business current account. Don't worry, if you need to switch to a different bank quickly, you can actually click on the text here as a drop down and easily switch between them so it's not too confusing. So obviously there's nothing in here at the minute because I haven't uploaded a statement and I haven't enabled a bank feed. So I'm going to actually add something in here so we can explain our transactions. All right, I have made a statement for me to upload because I am not setting up bank feeds, but for most people, I think the bank feeds are the best option, especially with open banking, since it links it directly to your bank account and just sends free agent the necessary information, such as what the transaction description was and the amount that you've paid or received. And I'm gonna select the business account that I want to update. So if you have multiple accounts, just make sure you're doing the right one. And you also have a guest transactions feature and you can review the guest transactions. So what will happen is Freedom will try to use the same explanations from previous uploads to explain the current one. So it could save you a bit of time without you having to go through each one manually. So I'm gonna upload this statement. Okay, so my statement's been uploaded. I'm just gonna go back to the banking tab to kind of show you what it'll look like if you set up bank feeds. So I'm just gonna click into business current account and here we go. So let's say I had a bank feed and this is the transactions that have been pulled through from my bank feed into free agent and it should match my bank account exactly. Like it should be the same, everything. So I have given some examples of the types of transactions you would be using on free agent to explain them with you and hopefully clarify some things along the way. So we have this transfer that I have paid myself into the bank account because I wanted to have some money in my business account initially when it first started. So this happens quite often and the easiest way to explain this is any time that you are paying yourself or any time you have paid money into the business is always going to be the user option. So if we click on this and this type here, the first drop down box, we're going to select money received from user. So you are the user of free agents. So anytime you're paying money to yourself or you're paying money from yourself, always use this option because it's gonna be likely the most relevant in your situation. So money received from user, and I have paid this money into the business. So this money is owed back to me. As you can see here, it's automatically selected the category of payment to director loan account, which is the actually the one I wanna use because this shows that the loan is owed back to me. And then I can later repay myself from the same account when the money gets paid back to me. So I'm gonna explain this transaction. And now it has turned green, which means it's been successfully explained, which is excellent. And the next transaction, you can see the reference here or the description shows that it's an invoice payment from Apple. So if I click on this, it should automatically select the invoice I've already created on free agent. So, yep, and there it goes. It took a, there was a small delay, but it has actually picked it up. So you can see here, it's automatically selected the invoice based on the amount and the description. 
So I can just make sure that one's selected and explain my transaction. If this doesn't work for you, so let's say I go to explain my second invoice and let's say this doesn't come up and it automatically does something like this. So it's listing the type of sales and everything, which would be correct technically, it is a sale, but we want to make sure the invoice in free agent is paid. And how we do that is just make sure you click the type and select invoice receipt. And now the invoice list will show up here where you can select your invoice. If there's nothing coming up here, that means there's no invoice available to be paid. In this circumstance, you might have created a manual payment for your invoice from the invoicing section, or you have a duplicate bank account transaction, which is either you received an additional payment or the actual transaction has been duplicated. And we would need to look into that to decide which one it is. But basically make sure it's the invoice receipt option and explain the transaction. And there we have it. Our two invoices have been paid and you can actually click to view the invoices as well if you wanted to, um, but I'm not gonna do that right this second. There is another transaction here to Adobe for 53 pounds. And this is actually my software subscription to Adobe. So I'm using like Photoshop and Illustrator and all that stuff. So I'm gonna click on this. And the type of thing that it is, is a payment. In fact, it is an expense payment. So I'm just gonna leave it as payment. And I'm gonna leave the VAT as auto. But in most cases, you'll see here, when you click on the category, there's an admin expenses, normally VAT-able sections. So this is standard rate VAT options in most cases. Just make sure it is actually true because if you order something from, let's say, the US and it's a software and it doesn't have VAT on, then obviously there's not gonna be VAT on the purchase itself. So just keep that in mind. If you're on the flat rate VAT scheme, you can leave it as auto because it won't apply anyway will be using your invoices to calculate the liability to HMRC. So in this case, what I wanna do is select my computer software option here. And I'm gonna leave the VAT as auto for now because I'm happy with that. And I'm gonna explain that transaction. And what this does is it adds the expense onto the overview page and again, deducts that from the total profit figure. So this is why we don't want to add an additional expense under my money expenses because it will duplicate this transaction that's come through the bank. So that's why the my money expenses section is reserved only for personally paid for transactions such as personal credit card, personal debit card or cash. Anything with the business card or a business credit card account, anything like that is going to be uploaded with bank statements onto free agent and explained through there instead. So now the next time this statement, if I upload another statement and this transaction is there again, it should guess that it's a software cost and it'll automatically explain it like that and it'll actually show up as a yellow color, which means you have to approve it, but it's guessed the transaction. And these next few payments are basically payments to myself for various things. So the first one here we can see is dividend. I have referenced this as a dividend payment. So like I said, any time is to do with payments to yourself or from yourself, it's going to be a user payment. So we can go into the type box and select money paid to user. And this will give us in the category section, all the options we need of the types of payments that we could possibly make to ourselves. So in this case, it's going to be a dividend payment. So I'm gonna click that and explain the transaction. Okay, that's done. It's been explained as dividend, which is perfect. This one is salary. So I've paid myself for salary. Again, I'm gonna go here, click money paid to user. And the category has automatically popped up with net salary and bonuses, which is perfect. I'm gonna explain that. Okay, and I'm gonna skip over this one for a second. The last one we do is expenses. So we click on that one. Again, money paid to user. And then make sure the expense payment option is selected and explain transaction. In a second here, I'm gonna go into each of these accounts and show you how it has changed on free agent. So the transfer option, this is me repaying myself that 100 pounds I initially paid into the business because it now has its own money and its own little bit of cash flow, which is perfect. 
and I can just pay myself back for that. And since the first one went into the director loan account, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to click on this, I'm going to select money paid to user, and the category is going to be payment from director loan account. And if I explain this, it'll clear off these balances here. So you'll see the money coming in of 100 and then the money going out of 100. And then it'll disappear altogether because the total balance is now zero. So this is the easiest way to explain your bank transactions. Just make sure anytime it's money to do with coming in to your personal account or money paying out from a personal account to the business, it's always going to be the user option. So keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, they'll be by default selecting payment. And for invoices, it'll be by default selecting invoice receipt or sales. So one thing I have forgotten to add here is, which I'm surprised I did, is the accountancy fee. Oh, it's already explained it for me. The date is wrong. Okay, that makes sense. It's guessed this transaction for me. So this, <laughs> let me delete that explanation. This is actually a simple way to delete that. You can check this box and just remove the one explanation and that'll unexplain it. So if you got it wrong, no problem. You can easily just remove the explanation you put in there before, or you can click on it and change it. So in this case, I have paid the accountancy fee. Obviously it's impossible because it's in the future, but let's say this is possible. I have paid the accountancy fee of 120 pounds from the business account. And since I've done this, we have the bill in the bill section waiting to be paid with this money. So similar to the invoices and how you allocate the payment from the bank account to the invoice, you'll allocate this money out to the bill. So if we click on this, it'll automatically recognize that it's a bill payment and try to select the correct bill. If it does not, and it simply selects payment and like this, and then you just go ahead and click accountancy fee, this will duplicate the transaction because there's already an existing bill in the bills tab, which is waiting to be paid. And this will create a new transaction rather than paying the existing bill. So in this case, we want to make sure bill payment is selected. And then we want to select the appropriate bill from the drop down box and then explain the transaction. And now this has paid our bill and our most recent balance is much lower because this bill is in the future. So, but that's kind of how it works when you do get around to doing that. Um, but it's not so important at the minute. If we go back to August, we can see we've got all our invoices and the outgoing transactions, which are mostly payments to ourselves and one business expense. So if we head back to the overview page, you'll see some things have changed now because you'll see the banking balance. You can see the cash flow balance as well. Like I said, this does not have to do with how much money is available for you to take from the company. It's simply all of the incoming amounts and all of the outgoing amounts in the business in a set period of time. So you can see here the balance is 786, but the balance down here is 540 pounds. And this is the balance you wanna pay attention to when taking dividends because this has accounted for corporation tax and it has accounted for dividends you've already taken. So it's gonna deduct those from this total amount. And the main thing that has changed this time is the expenses, because like I said, the income is accounted for when your invoices are created or when your payment has come in, if that's before the invoice date. 